Good Tuesday afternoon. I'm meteorologist Tim Pandagis here with your update on the tropics. Today we're talking about the Atlantic Basin and the Pacific. But before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if at the end of the video you like what you saw, hit that like button as well. We have plenty more videos coming out for the remainder of the season as conditions warrant. Now today we're talking about Invest 95L, a quick refresher from our video yesterday. Invest means investigative area. 95 is just a number we rotate from 90 to 99 and then go back to 90. And the L indicates that it is in the Atlantic Basin. And we also, if we jump over to the Pacific Basin, we have a hurricane, Category 2 hurricane, Elita, that's quickly going to be decaying in the next 12 hours as it encounters some much colder ocean waters. Invest 95L is very, very close to becoming the 10th named storm of the year. That next name on the list is Josephine, followed by Kyle and Laura. If in fact we do get that 10th named storm before October 19th, which obviously will happen, it's pretty high likelihood, <clears throat> excuse me, we're at 90% chance of that happening. We're about two months ahead of schedule here. So pretty, uh, pretty impressive so far out there in the Atlantic Basin so far. Also, if it does develop before August 22nd, uh, we'll beat the record for the earliest occurrence of a J-named storm, and that's pretty much been the trend with each storm we've had so far this year. Jose was the, is the previous record, or currently holds it right now, August 22nd, 2005. All right, here's a look at the basin. There's some activity out there, plenty of tropical waves, but one in particular that we're going to be focusing on is investigative area 95L that right now you can see there in the red shading, a 90% chance of this going on to become Josephine, either a tropical depression number 11 first and then tropical storm Josephine, or we just go straight to a tropical storm here, depending if the conditions warrant and the thunderstorm activity flares back up. Overnight and early this morning, the thunderstorm activity did flare up. You can see it on the satellite imagery here. We're looking at the infrared that tells us the temperature of the cloud tops. The colder the cloud tops, the higher up in the sky they are, meaning the more strong the thunderstorm activity is. And you can see in some of these filters here that we have some whites and black showing on up there, and that's cold cloud tops, strong thunderstorm activity. But there's something very interesting going on here. As I flip this over to visible satellite imagery, you can see that it's kind of lopsided. Even a closer inspection is that you can see the low level circulation completely exposed. You look at the east side of the system and it's completely void of any convection, any thunderstorm activity. You're finding all of it on the western side. It's asymmetrical. Why is that? Well, it's encountering easterly wind shear and that's effectively blowing the cloud tops off towards the west here from any thunderstorm activity and exposing that low level center there. The wind shear, however, which is a change in wind direction and speed with height, detrimental to tropical development. It is expected to wane significantly over the next couple of days. In fact, there's a pretty long period of time today, tomorrow, and even into the day on Thursday and even Friday that we could see conditions conducive enough to help it develop to become a tropical storm Josephine and maybe even a little bit stronger than that. It will be dependent on exactly how things play out. But this is the wind shear forecast. Anything you're shaded here is conditions that have higher wind shear, so unfavorable. You notice here on the forecast track, especially by later this week, we see those conditions really relax a bit and wind shear shouldn't be so much of a problem. Also on the side of the storm developing, the warm sea surface temperatures. We got plenty of energy in the oceans here. Low 80s, we need around 79, 80 or higher, and we have that on the forecast track. Also, the one thing that may be detrimental to it as well, on top of the wind shear in the next 12 hours or so, is the dry air. It's been a big problem this season so far with keeping systems together, and there's a lot of dry air to the north and off to the west, indicated by the oranges and the yellows there. We're looking at the water vapor satellite imagery here, very moist center of that system, obviously, with the tropical system. So how do things play out here on the computer models? Well, most of these pretty consistent here, a track pretty much due west and then a north northwesterly track or west northwesterly track, uh, kind of maybe grazing the northern parts of the Leeward Islands, if not passing completely to the north there. We have to keep in mind that this time of the year, a large Bermuda high is pretty much encompassing the entire Atlantic. So this tends to steer these storms farther to the west unless there's a gap or a weakness in that ridge and we start to see it lift to the north. So it's going to be really important to watch what happens if we get to this point in time. And this is likely the end of the week 
and this weekend. So there's a lot of time between now and then. All right, let's jump over to the Pacific now, and this is Hurricane Alita. Last we spoke yesterday, this was only a tropical storm, and it has jumped now to 100 mile per hour winds with gusts up to 120. A Category 2 hurricane here. It's a rather small system, and the good news with this is it's not going to be impacting land. And as it moves forward, it's going to be weakening significantly here within the next 24 hours. However, it is the second hurricane of the eastern Pacific season. When it falls in line with climatology, we're a little bit behind schedule by nearly a month. July 14th is typically on or around when we see the second hurricane in the, in the Pacific Basin. Here's the forecast track on it. Notice it does weaken significantly. It's seen its peak already as a Category 2, and as it moves off towards the north and northwest, it will be encountering significantly colder sea surface temperatures. In fact, dropping about 10 degrees below the threshold you need for tropical development and activity down into the lower 70s here by the time we get towards the later part of this week. All right, that's the latest on the Atlantic and the Pacific. Remember to hit that subscribe button and hit that like button too. And you can also find me on all the social media platforms on Facebook. I'm on Instagram and on Twitter. We'll see you tomorrow.